Hello guys, so welcome to another episode of my channel and I'm so glad you've made time to join me once again and trust me, I'm fully inspired because trust me, on the 17th of January that we, I mean in US here, we took it aside to celebrate the works of Martin Luther King here I had 10k subscribers and trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad and very much appreciative and I'm fully inspired to do more for you guys so i've been following your questions and i mean the series of comments that i've been receiving emails and trust me um, I'm, I'm i'm going to respond i've been responding i'm going to respond those i've not been able to respond so with this episode fast forward i'm going to tackle the issue of contacting grad coordinators i mean establishing some relationship with them before you submit your application and after you submit your application what should you do um how to contact a potential supervisor, how to code email a professor for funding and all these areas. So it's all about sending an email to a professor. Why do you do so and how do you go about it? So that's what we're here to do and I'm having with me here my dear sister and trust me, she is verified. When I verify someone, trust me, I have checked a lot of variables, I've considered a lot of variables. So trust me, she's very far by the end of this session, you're going to be enlightened. So if you haven't subscribed, kindly do so. And if you're a returning viewer, hello guys. So I'm glad you've stayed glued to your screen and you've made time to join this session. And trust me, you're going to be enlightened. So quickly, if you are new here, my name is Kins Fodonina and I'm currently pursuing my master's degree in economics at Eastern Illinois University and I'm also a graduate teaching assistant at the Department of Economics so um, that is all about me if you don't know me and I'm glad you've made time to join me here so I'm having another scholar here trust me when I say a scholar I mean a scholar this lady is really brilliant and I don't know how to brilliant bolding underline and italic she is good trust me she's very good so I would like to introduce herself and should I start for you Okay. Um, she had her bachelor's degree in political science and French at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology back in Ghana and she flew to Russia, specifically in Moscow. What is the school's name again? Help me. <laughs> High School of Economics. Mm -hmm. And how many students were selected from Africa? Okay, so for that university, the, the scholarship is awarded to the continent in cohorts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'll say like in Africa, in my program, mm -hmm. I was the only one selected. So. Guys, so this affirms what I'm talking about. So let me get from there. So I'll let her continue. So your name and program you're doing here, your oh. role and everything, yeah. Okay, so my name is Ruby. I'm in the Human Services um, program at the Eastern Illinois University. Um, I'm also a GA in the department. Yeah. So quickly, um, Ruby, we want to talk about um, how to, why reaching out to professors or emailing professors why do we do so and how do we go about it so let's start from uh why do we reach out to professors why do we email them during application process because everything is clearly clearly spelled out there you read you apply why is it is there a need for one to contact a professor before submitting application in your opinion how, mm. why why do we do that so um i think it's re very important to reach out to coordinators, to professors for programs that are interested in from their website. So in the first place, um, reaching out to coordinators um, serves as a good um, touch for making inquiries. So for instance, um, usually when you are making applications, most schools specify um, requirement for GRE, some also require um, English proficiency and all that. So I come from Ghana. So, um, and in some countries, uh, aside the UK, I think um, most US schools, European schools, East um, Asian schools, most of them will require that we, we come with uh, English proficiency or GRE. So um, that's where it comes in. So me coming from Ghana, I've studied all my life in English. Uh, in English. That's right. um, I did my program in English. English and yeah. sometimes you don't want to go through the stress of just writing, the, yeah, just writing the GRE again, um, going to write I, 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 L, I, I, L, T, S, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. So, <laughs> you so you writing all those things. So it becomes important that you write to the coordinators for them to know that you can, you are very competent with the, with the English language, very proficient, you can write very articulate essays and all that. So that's where it comes in. Um, aside the English proficiency and then asking for waivers. Um, so we can say that to, to make that point, um, very succinct like 
you write to request um, for waivers, test waivers. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so exactly. So um, that's one of the use. Aside that, you can also make inquiries about funding. Mm -hmm. So for some of the programs, the funding um, um, benefits or the privileges are outlined on the on the website. For some, it is not explicitly written there. So you write to the coordinators, making inquiries about um, are there fundings, um, uh, the breakdown. Yes. So sometimes some of the schools will have internal funding. Mm -hmm. Some will have external and they'll point it out. So I'll, I'll bring in, uh, when, I, when I went to Moscow, so the application process was such that when you apply for your master's, um, you, are, you have a panel, you have interview with a panel, they talk to you, they go through your document and everything. So, and after that, you are given a point. So if you get, I think, 80 and above or 70 and above, you are, you are considered for the Russian government scholarship. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the applicants are many. Mm -hmm. there are, we are so many all over the world. So when you apply and then you don't get that, you quickly see on your portfolio that you don't get it. So um, whilst I was applying, I, I further probed, I wrote to the coordinator asking mm -hmm. him about other external funding. And it was then he mentioned of, um, I've, I've forgotten, um, this it's very popular and it's issued by the Russian embassy in Ghana. So they have external scholarship that are for students who want to pursue programs in Russia. But then it's not the schools that issue it. Mm -hmm. How would I have known this if I had not written to That's the right. coordinator asking him about if there are other um, funding packages that are there for students just to secure my chances mm -hmm. of getting funding. So um, basically the waivers and then the funding opportunities Changes. that are available yeah. are there department yeah. level so we i think we can tag that first point as we write to coordinators to make inquiries yeah so for instance um during my application uh myself i i think i just discovered that because when you go to the school's website where they are frequently asked questions you're going to get a lot of questions that you would want to ask which is already captured there mm -hmm. and the department is having every information you would need but for instance during the COVID 19 a lot of schools we're not having funding available for the prospective academic year oh. and they might have not updated their site mm -hmm. so i normally write to ask for instance do you have funding for the i mean the pending semester mm -hmm. or for fall 2022 as i mean or 2021 during my application yeah. so i reached out to one school i think new Mexico state university and the person told me that for economics department they don't have funding available but if you had not asked this question in submit application yeah do you get what I'm saying? So, if you're a prospective scholarship seeker, emailing coordinators, the first thing that you're talking about is what? You write to make inquiries. And I have a friend too, I mean, who reached out to professor for some external fundings, as you rightly said. Mm -hmm. Aside the department and funding, as a coordinator, so aside the G, what are some of the um, available opportunities on campus that I can also want? Chance on and probably help me pursue my degree or get to your school. And that colleague I'm talking about had a resident assistant, I mean, and they didn't get, I mean, an internal wow. sponsoring sponsor from what? From the department. Mm -hmm. So you reach out, you ask questions and try. The most important is that when making inquiries, you don't ask questions that are already captured on the department website. The, the coordinator will then copy the, 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 link. the link there for you to go and read. Yeah. <laughs> because that means you don't like to read. Yeah. You, you just write any email. Um, I want to ask if you give scholarship to international students. Is this question and um i mean the point you mentioned is very crucial so mm -hmm. i've i've had a friend who didn't read mm -hmm. on the website and asked the question and then uh, embarrassingly i mean mm -hmm. it's very embarrassing that as a graduate student you want to go and study and they are looking for competencies like your proactiveness mm -hmm. your ability to take notice and observe information and be able to make use of it and the guy didn't read the website mm -hmm. so he went to ask the question to the coordinator and um, the response was it was it was mm -hmm. very very harsh i would say the, the coordinator was he um he he or she said something like you want to come to the grad school and, and you, can't, you can't even read and that is very it's a minus <laughs> that is it it's a, it's a big minus to your application if you're not it. if you're not able to read the information on the website very well and then know what to ask and what not to ask then to add to the um scholarship part mm -hmm. about the inquiries it is very important because sometimes you may not get internal funding or external funding but sometimes when you write to coordinators because they are aware of researchers or lecturers in the department their research interests 
they are able to tell that okay this researcher this um instructor a mm -hmm. is embarking on these studies and has grants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so by inquiring you are the yeah. some coordinators will be able to link you up to those researchers mm -hmm. or those lecturers who have grants in the department mm -hmm. to enable you get funding to come mm -hmm. so i mean it, it's it's a big door opening uh, i mean for us as students to always make inquiries and it's always important That's right. on top of all this information that we are we are asking it's not because you want to um put yourself out there like to say okay i'm i'm from ghana i want you to uh see and then ask some questions no mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the 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 reason why you do that is for rapport rapport mm -hmm. rapport building mm -hmm. on top of all these inquiries that you make you are building a form of rapport with them and mind you, you are applying with billions of students from mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. Some people have, I mean, I would say crazy credentials. Let, let, me, even, let me even chip in this. Wait, wait. So now with the inquiry and now the points she's making here, rapport, I want it to be very systematic. For instance, I asked the question, I mean, some schools will make available that last year we received applications from 500 students, 50 students mm -hmm. in that order. Some schools, you won't get it. So for my school that my first school that I had an offer from, I asked the coordinator, how many applicants or applications did you receive for last year's I mean cohort? And he said 34. Wow. That is that is very, I mean, yeah, um, manageable. Very so I said that, oh, 34 applications. How many people were you considered for funding? He said five. Then I said, oh, then probably I stand a chance. But you can go to your school, they said that they received 500 applications. Trust me, that is <laughs> that is so outrageous. Do you get it? So these are some kind of Tactical questions, questions you won't get on their website. You don't just, you don't just want to, I mean, write to them because you want to apply. You don't do that. So rapport building does not mean that you're going to write to request for friendship. No, 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 no. no. It is about the series of em exchange of emails, yeah, back and forth, yeah, the back content. And forth. Thank you. Then the person gets to know you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This guy is really good. Yeah. So the coordinator told me, for let me give you my my my, my first funding. Mm. The coordinator told me after submitting application, let me know. Wow. And that was the first offer I had on 24 February. Wow. Guys, you get it. So I didn't write to request for friendship, no. But the, the way and manner in which I go about my email, I ask, what was the average GP for funding? You want some, some schools like Duke University, you get on the website, by a school that was applying, I didn't get it. So you what? Read. Yeah. Now let's go to this one. Um, the, the structure. Or let me say contacting a potential supervisor contacting a potential supervisor and also the structure of that email um, i know you had a supervisor at um, canada she also she also had an offer to canada and us and had to opt for one so she's a big woman so um how do you go about it um generally guys you go to the department website you see that if you check the, for the faculty you have the list there or you go to the directory these are the two at other schools you are faculty others use what directory so you see professor ruby then you select her works and you read to. I mean, so how do you go about it? How did you go about it? Okay. And what was the structure of your email okay. to get a supervisor? So um, to get a supervisor, sometimes you can email the coordinator and the supervisor mm -hmm. at the same time. But at the supervisor level, you are asking questions with regards to your research interests and what you are looking mm -hmm. forward to doing. Mm -hmm. So usually, um, as we go through our undergrad studies, we read papers. Mm -hmm. And as you read papers, you take courses, you get, you become interested in certain specific areas. Yes. And as you 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 nurture that interest, you come across with, um, lecturers in departments who have written papers. Mm -hmm. So for me, it always starts from there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in gender-related mm -hmm. issues, um, and usually I try to acquit myself with papers around this area. So I see papers about gender-related issues, domestic violence then i look before i go to the school because sometimes you not just know the school the people will just tell you that okay this lecturer is in this department so in your research you get to know you discover professors who are in this yes school. oh wow in the papers that you read mm -hmm. always look that out because sometimes it becomes very painstaking going to google um you want to do something related to sociology women's studies mm -hmm. gender studies and you don't even know what school to go wow. and there are a lot of um papers. schools in this as uh, um, running the same program mm -hmm. but you know in as much as there are a lot of schools running this same program there are certain aspects of the program that some some of the schools um, department covers some don't cover so for instance if you take um sociology mm -hmm. 
some schools cover medical sociology mm -hmm. so there's an aspect of so uh, medical sociology there's an aspect in domestic violence there's an aspect in organizational sociology mm -hmm. so every school and their and what they focus in That's and true. the staff that they have there so when you see that i'm interested in domestic violence okay you sometimes you don't happen to read papers from this department what you do is you go to the directory the staff mm -hmm. or the faculty mm -hmm. then you look for professors who are whose interests align with yours mm -hmm. because one of the one of the um one of the things that increase your chances is that the school wants to see your interest do they have an in-house person who can mentor you mm -hmm. to be able so, to carry out that research Ruby, to, to make it more specific how do you i mean I mean, you, you come to the structure. Yeah. With the structure, I mean, I said it's not an interview. So, with the structure, <laughs> uh, probably starts with what? Um, the subject of the email. Yeah. So, um, uh, prospective international the, applicants. Yeah, and the, the subject should that, be very I mean, important. So, supervisor, how do you, I mean. Yeah, so, so you are writing the letter, your email mm -hmm. is there. Then the, so, as you said, prof uh, prospective, prospective, yeah. um, prospective students. Mm -hmm. Then maybe dash in sociology, mm -hmm. MA in sociology or whatever. Mm -hmm. So after you write that, you don't need to write a very lengthy essay. No, mm -hmm. I think that like four or five lines will do. Mm -hmm. So first you can talk about yourself. So my name is Ruby Amanda. I am from Ghana and I'm a prospective student in this program mm -hmm. in the department. Um, you would want to make inquiries with regards to getting a, superv uh, um, a supervisor. Yeah. So then you make the, 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 the reason why you're writing the letter clear. Then the subsequent letter, you write about how did you meet these lecturers? Mm -hmm. How did you meet this professor? Because mm -hmm. you just don't write to the professor mm -hmm. and then you don't know anything about him yet you want him to supervise mm -hmm. you. Uh, it doesn't really work well that way. So, so okay, I read mm -hmm. your paper mm -hmm. in one of my seminar papers mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whilst I went through your, um, your the department website, I saw you've written a paper in this area. I, I have done something similar in this area. I've presented in conferences in this similar area and i would want you to guide me mm -hmm. if possible this fall are you there are you available so these are the something like this that, that you ask let, let, let me even, let me even chip in this you know let me even chip in this you don't just go to the site you've seen that professor interested in um, labor economics development economics um i went to the site i saw that interested in labor <laughs> economics development economics i'm most interested in that <laughs> then uh, you just copy that and say th this is a generic email yeah you try and probably if you can't read the whole research the abstract is enough yeah. to know what the person did in the paper yeah. so let me even chip in this so that we will kind of compress it do you think it is important to contact other professors some schools for, i mean your department you didn't need to get a supervisor before coming here mm -hmm. myself west michigan i didn't need a supervisor before applying but i saw one professor um her name was christy mosa and I want to just, I'm trying to get you some, so you can search her out from Western Michigan. And I knew that she was interested in development economics. Mm. And current, uh, at, that, at, that, at that moment, she was doing something around that area. So, though they, they didn't require us to get a supervisor, but I knew probably it's a committee that makes that mission decision. So I reached out to her. They didn't write a generic email. I took time to read her works at Jamaica, what she was doing, and cited something, mentioned the country she was working on. And sometimes you get them on, the, on their CVs. Yeah. Their, I mean, Google Scholar will get you their works and stuff. Yeah. So, guys, it's all about the issue of what? Writing generic emails. Yeah. Trust me, they get a ton of emails. A lot. And um, to just to add to mm -hmm. what you said. So, as you said earlier, I happened to get admissions in um, one one big school in mm -hmm. Canada, mm -hmm. uh, Memorial, Memorial University. Yeah. Newfoundland of Labrador. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that university. And yeah. um, I... For them, it required you get a supervisor. supervisor. So I wrote to this supervisor who is interested in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. However, the proposal in the, uh, before we come to the attachments, mm -hmm. you add to the letter after mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. I wrote so, a proposal um, around the area of medical sociology. So um, it was, it's something related to maternal health and then um, an emerging field that he was trying to, uh, he's delving into. So he mentioned that he's done a research with somebody who came from Oxford. They've done something similar. And the narrative I was taking was um, new. Okay, okay. It was new and he was really interested in building that research interest. So if you don't talk to the supervisor mm -hmm. and you just see domestic violence, 
you wouldn't be able to tell that okay this and area is broke exactly does he also is he interested in this area mm -hmm. so sometimes writing to them and um letting them know your interest mm -hmm. increases your chances on the board mm -hmm. because he became so much interested in what i want to pursue mm -hmm. in at the research level to the extent that the man ended up we had more than three skype interviews that is it did you request for the interview no that is it guys he, because she he didn't. knows he knows you know what you want and to trust do. me that school you're talking about if you are to look out for data on people that apply to their school it will scare you yeah but what made her i mean stand out that's, that's what i brought her here <laughs> so it is a skill it is not having what a format yeah. although i will share with you some i mean some format of some of these emails in my um description session but it is a skill that we master so that's what we're teaching you and sometimes to after i mean when you are signing off or you are signing out in your email the conclu concluding paragraph you can just i mean request for a paper which you couldn't get access to mm -hmm. to to show how i mean serious you are and also probably request for an interviewer she had it easily but you can request then what are some of the documents you attach to your to, to these emails yeah okay so for the documents um usually you have to add your cv mm -hmm. um sometimes you have to add your transcripts so for instance if you are going to work with a professor um, for the program for data, you don't really need to add a transcript mm -hmm. because at the admission level, you will add it. Mm -hmm. But for the supervisors, usually they want to work with somebody who already has a skill with the research, mm -hmm. um, like uh, when it comes to research methodologies, what, what, what are your skills? Mm -hmm. What grade did you get for your dissertation mm -hmm. at your undergrad level? What courses have you taken um, that can also help him? Like you will not have to spend so much time teaching you, training you. Yeah, yeah training and everything mm -hmm. they do train you and i tell you after your studies you get new skills that you wouldn't have gotten anywhere That's but having having a certain level like foundation, a foundation yeah. is very useful yeah. so you can attach your uh, your transcript as well then if you are writing to talk about research mm -hmm. one of the key thing i would tell you and one thing that i mean um Help me to get admission mm -hmm. is that usually when I write to department, I always add my proposal. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. because you are applying with a lot of people, the department is not asking you to submit any proposal. Mm -hmm. Yet you've gone the extra mile no. because in the proposal writing, you teach you you show your skill to frame a problem, mm -hmm. which is part of the uh, social mm -hmm. science, mm -hmm. your um, problem statement, your introduction. Mm -hmm. How are you able to write critically, mm -hmm. analyze well? The, the, re, the literature review that you, you've done, how are you able to integrate it and bring out your point? So this is one thing that um, the professor will, I mean, if it's not even sent and the professor is on the board and they are recruiting students, there's no way the professor will not mention your name. That's true. Because he knows you sent your proposal. That's you true. know what you want to do. That's true. And they are in that area and they always, I mean, we are coming out let, there let, let me even chip in this so that we kind of slid up uh, seal the conversation mm -hmm. you know um the professor was talking about what happened i, I didn't I, I didn't end up going to that school you also did the same thing you only <laughs> go to that school though so, i mean that's just by the way yeah so what i mean that professor did was that she followed up with my application and funny enough i was going to work although they didn't need i didn't need a supervisor i was going to assist her as a what as a teaching assistant at that department she was on sabbatical but she ensured that at least this student was catered for so guys all that we are saying is that in situations whereby you don't need a supervisor try and reach out you may get a feedback you may not get a feedback that shouldn't be a problem but in situations whereby you need a supervisor canada for instance they normally have their format of how to write i mean to get a supervisor some schools are like Ledbridge, they have their format yeah. newfoundland they have their format but other schools you have to just send an email and they have their format already on there website and kind of start, kind of stuff they need so in event they reply fine if they don't reply trust me my my boss here on campus here he can get a ton of emails we, you know we are we share office like my office is next to his mm -hmm. and then the email notification will come kadum, 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 <laughs> to be counted like 200 emails per day so what will let the lecturer i mean select yours select yours yeah. some people grammatical errors improper structure no justification like just yes. oh but it's also useful that um grammarly you know grammarly grammarly it's, also helps it's free online it's free online so as you read don't be so don't be so sure that what you've written is correct 
because english uh, in as much as it's our mother tongue sometimes the english that sounds wrong is the correct one and let uh, professors or coordinators will not have the time to read mm -hmm. back mistakes. and forth to no, me. No, 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 no. One so professor, for instance, let me read you in this. Yeah. One professor, for instance, if you don't address her well, that is it. Mm -hmm. She won't mind you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that is all for this session. And I'm so glad you made time to join us. I know we discussed a lot of stuff and issues. And we were quite social science or non stem by us. But trust me, the pattern follows the same for um, or works for those in um, the STEM based programs or those who want to do chemistry and it mathematics and it related programs whereby you require a supervisor is it PhD go through the same pattern so that is all for this session if you have any question I mean just gladly ask in the comment section and I will gladly also respond but before we sign out I'll let my sister give you I mean a quick rundown a tip advice and trust me we thank you so much for coming on our channel and it's been just 28 days or a month and trust me we are doing very well and wow. i'm glad you've graced my channel here so what is your what are your last words you share we want to share with them yeah okay so i would like to thank you very much for this opportunity to be on your platform and to meet your lovely uh, subscribers and audience um so i will just wrap up by saying that writing to coordinators writing to professors if you if you are previewed to have the the chance or the internet or the resources to do so i will encourage you to all right guys so that is all for this session once again so once again my name is kingsford and i had ruby here but a quick disclaimer if you don't get a reply that does not mean you shouldn't apply yeah so tada peace out the journey of hope bye bye